can find particles dispersed in a turbulent flow in many situations in nature and in industry. So for example, you had this Iceland volcanic eruption which caused major uh, air travel disruption because volcanic ash particles were dispersed all over the place in Northern Europe. So researchers want to model these kind of systems uh, to have a statistical description of the properties of the flow. So the key parameters in such a problem are the Reynolds number, the density ratio of which is the ratio of the particle density to the fluid density and then the size ratio which is a ratio of the particle diameter to the smallest relevant length scale of the flow. So we are interested in the particular case of uh, bubbles, air bubbles in water which are basically lighter particles than the surrounding fluid. When you consider the general case of a finite size particle in a turbulent flow, so the particle does not follow all the smallest scale fluctuations. This means there is an effect of the finite size. And also, because the particle is big, there is probably an effect of gravity. So we will actually focus on these two interesting issues. So the experiments are conducted in the Twente water tunnel at the University of Twente. So this is a water tunnel which extends three stories high, uh, it's eight meters high. It is filled with 6,000 liters of water. The bubbles being generated below through capillary needles and then they rise through the test section and they escape at the top. So an active grid generates homogeneous and isotropic turbulence. This is a live experiment where the camera on the right rises along with the bubbles. You see the bubbles being frozen as they rise along. We detect these bubble centers and then do a standard 2D particle tracking to obtain their trajectories. The experimental results are compared with numerical simulations and these DNS simulations implement function corrections. So these function corrections account for the non-uniformity of the flow at the particle scale. Let's look at the effect of finite size. So here you see a plot of the acceleration variance normalized with those of tracer particles versus the size ratio. You would expect in a general sense that as the particle becomes bigger, the acceleration variance goes down. And this is what you see for uh, neutrally buoyant particles. Uh, here, this is data from numerical simulations. When you consider bubbles, however, the added mass term becomes dominant and you see we have this upper line, upper uh, theoretical bound of beta square equals 9, which is predicted from the equation. Numerical simulations also predict the increase in acceleration variance for the bubbles, as you can see. The experiments show a very nice agreement with the numerical simulations. Let's look at the effect of the size on the acceleration PDF. So here you see a result for uh, micro bubbles, uh, which from a previous study we've established that they almost behave as tracer particles. When you plot the results for the finite size bubbles, you see that there is a clear decrease in the intermittency compared to tracer particles or micro bubbles. To summarize, for finite size bubbles, the variances of both the horizontal and vertical components are about five times uh, the variance of tracers. The intermittency of the uh, horizontal component goes down as size ratio increases. Thank you for your attention.